Welcome back, everyone. So I'm going to be putting my all my piston rings on and loading them up so we can start getting our pistons dropped and get this project moving along. Here they are. Compression rings, oil scraper rings, and oil rings. With these oil rings, if you look here, we got two different types. Here's one that has that little clip in there to so hold it from the ring from spinning. Only one of these has the clip in there. It'll keep the whole assembly from spinning. I've already loaded up two of them so far. I'm going to start loading up the third one. This is part of your oil control ring. It keeps tension on the top and two rings. There's three parts to your oil control ring. And this goes in between the two. It's the very bottom ring. You always want to start loading your rings from the bottom up. It's really hard to get past the rings after you put them on. You want to put your bottom one on first, which is the one that doesn't have the tab on it. You want to get it just to kind of sit down in there. Now the tab on the other oil control ring goes in this little spot in the piston right here. So the gap on the bottom one, you, you want to offset them. You want to offset the gap between the two rings. So the bottom ring here, the gap's right here, and the top one's going to end up in this hole. There's the oil control ring installed. Next ring we have to put on is our oil scraper ring. The oil scraper ring is di directional. This little end indicates it's supposed to be towards the top of the piston. Since my oil control ring grooves on this side, I'm opening for my oil scraper ring on the opposite side. And the top ring is your compression ring. You want to put it on the opposite side of the opening for your oil scraper ring. Just one more to put together. Got my piston ring compression tool. Here's number one. If you look on the front, it says on the right side, an arrow pointing towards the front. So before you put your piston in, you want to make sure you lube up your cylinder walls. Make sure there's a nice coat of oil on anything. You also want to lube up the wrist pin journal down inside there too, so when you slide your wrist pin in, it'll be easy. And let's lube up our piston too. So you want to kind of get this straight as possible so you don't have a lot of issues when you try to slide your wrist pin through. They should pop right in. If they don't, you got something in the wrong spot. Let's lube up our wrist pin too. Now we got to put our clip in there. So I flipped the motor over. Now it's install number two, which is this one right here.
Let's double check to make sure all our gaps are in the proper spot. It says it's for the left side of the motor, pointed towards the front. So I got piston one and two installed. Now it's time for number three. If I ever told you this was easy, it's not. Number three is done. There we go. That's number four. Do O ring and some ultra gray. and some more ultra gray.
the old main seal. Put on this one. Put on the new seal. A block of wood. Tap it in. There, there we go. Now, since we have our back covers on and our main seal in, we can put on our new flywheel. Now I gotta torque down my flywheel. The trick that I like to use when I'm trying to torque down the flywheel or remove the flywheel, the way you keep your flywheel from spinning is you go get yourself a wrench. You put over one of your bolts. And then you put one of your other clutch bolts. Make sure you get a good amount of threads in too. You don't want to loosely put that in. Like that. Now your flywheel won't turn while you're trying to torque down all your bolts. I'm going to torque mine down to 55 foot pounds. Since now I have my flywheel on, now I can put my motor back in my engine stand. I got two more plugs to put in. I got one right here. For the new smash washer. One more. That's it. Next step would be to I gotta put my heads on, my oil pump my water pump. See you next time.